فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا ذا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم ابن باز prohibited مولد ابن باز prohibited سلوتي for other than Allah سبحانه وتعالى's name ابن باز prohibited allying with the kuffar the يهود and the نصارى all the other scholars of ابن باز ابن ثيبين الباري all did Why is it that you've never spoken about those topics of that that they speak about? But apparently here you have their fatwa. Now, if we look at the stem of the argument of Ibn Baz and Ibn Uthaymin and Al-Bani is that it is irtikabu al-maftadat al-sughra li daf' al-kubra. That's the, that's the backbone of the fatwa of those three noble scholars. <coughs> Are you with your brothers? <clears throat> And that is, if you're taking their fatwa, you have to take it with what their reasoning is. Or else you're not taking their fatwa, you're taking your hawa. Fattakullaha fi Allah in it. So their fatwa necessitates the following. Number one, that the maslaha is something that's going to come and it's a reality. It's not speculation and assumption. We're not going to go into a mafsada. That we know is a mafsada. to bring a maslaha that we don't even know if it's going to come. That's what they said. They said, if the Kabul mafsada, as-sughra li daf'u al-kubra. It is that you're doing this mafsada to get a maslaha. So in the speech is that the mafsada that you're taking is going to allow you to bring a maslaha about. Are you with me? In other words, that maslaha is going to come. And that maslaha is not wahmiyyah. in the brains of those people who are saying it. Now if we look at what happened in Egypt, even Syria, Sham, Jazair, if you look at what happened in Algeria, Pakistan, Turkey, 60 years, the last 60 years, brothers, look at history, has the maslaha come? Good. Number, point number two. The maslaha has to be higher than the mafsada that you're taking. Sahih? Are you there? Then, when we looked at democracy and we touched on it, what did we say? The Mafasid, what does it entail? It entails that we suffice from Allah and His Messenger. It also makes halal what is haram. And it bases this argument upon the majority. Not that which the Prophets and the Messengers, uh, the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has said. Democracy doesn't believe in al-wala wal-bara. It believes in watering down your belief. So you can gain the people's hearts. And that's why you saw Mursi say that the, the Coptic Christians in his country, he has to say that because he needs their voice. He needs their voice. So there's no khilaf with us and the Christians. This is all, the reason for this is all is what? Democracy, you need the voice of the people. Islam, would, you, would that happen to you? Why are the people prohibited from knocking on the doors of the leaders? Because this man's got money, right? It's going to buy you, right? Democracy is vice versa. It buy, makes the leader in accordance to the people. So the leader or the person who's going in place, he's always with the people. His desires is with the people. He needs to have the majority. He can't do anything. Like If it happens that he's disconnected from the people, he's in trouble. That's why Donald Trump every time says fake news, fake news, fake news, fake news. Uh, he calls everyone who criticizes it fake news, fake news. I didn't say that, I don't believe that. So, it's all about who can get to the people, who can speak to the people, who can portray things to the people. And I ask you today, who's got the power of the people today? The media. Who has the media in their hands? Us or them? 
them. So we are in a situation, my beloved brothers and sisters, this maslaha that we're bringing about is very little than the mafasid that we have to climb and the mafasid that we have to commit. So this again proves that the qa'id of the ulama are not being followed accordingly. Another thing is, there shouldn't be any other alternatives. If there's an alternative, you're not allowed to head that way. Are you with me? Do we have alternatives today? Now we have alternatives. Our alternatives is Hukmuna, we will rule Ala Nahji Muhammadi, the path of Nabi Allah Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Because it's the only thing that befits time and place. Based on those three. And that was the underlining reason why those scholars permitted it. We realized using their fatwa is in it is against you and it's for us. I'm now going to go to the final chapter, which is Nasa'ih advices that I'm going to give, inshallah ta'ala. I plan to give four advices. The first advice is Ihdaru, be cautious and stay away from al-Batil to defend falsehood. My beloved brothers and sisters, don't defend falsehood. Don't be one who speaks for falsehood. Allah says, وَلَا تُجَادِلْ عَنِ الَّذِينَ يَخْتَانُونَ أَنفُسَهُمْ إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُحِبُّ مَنْ كَانَ خَوَّانًا أَثِيمًا Allah says, don't argue for the ones who what? الَّذِينَ يَخْتَانُونَ أَنفُسَهُمْ Those who are deceptive to their own selves. إِنَّ اللَّهَ Verily, Allah does not love مَنْ كَانَ خَوَّانًا أَثِيمًا The second advice that I want to give is Stay away from believing a speech or an opinion without seeing the evidence. Stay away and be cautious of believing, opinion, holding an opinion when you haven't yet seen the evidence. The qa'idah according to the ulama is Man ista'ajala shay'un qabla awanihi uqiba bihirmanihi Anyone who hastens something before its timing is prohibited from it. If you hasten to something without having seen the evidence yet, you're going to be prohibited from it. You will. Allah says, وَلَا تَقْفُ مَا لَيْسَ لَكَ بِعِلْمٌ Don't speak and say something about a matter which you have no knowledge of. إِنَّ السَّبْعَ وَالْبَصَرَ وَالْفُؤَادُ كُلُّ أُولَٰئِكَ كَانَ عَنْهُ مَسْؤُولًا وَلَا تَقُولُوا لِمَا تَصِفُوا أَلْسِنَتُكُمُ الْكَذِبَ هَذَا حَلَالٌ وَهَذَا حَرَامٌ لِتَفْتَرُوا عَلَى اللَّهِ الْكَذِبِ إِنَّ الَّذِينَ يَفْتَرُونَ عَلَى اللَّهِ الْكَذِبَ لَا يُفْلِحُونَ مَتَاعٌ قَلِيلٌ وَلَهُمْ عَذَابٌ أَلِيمٌ Those people who say this falsely and lie, they say this is halal, this is haram, lying about Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, lying and making up. For verily the ones who lie about Allah, لَا يُفْلِحُونَ They're never going to find prosperity or success. Mata'un qaleel You're only probably going to see receive a little joy Walahum a'adabun aleem What awaits you is a severe punishment Allah also says Qul inna ma harrama rabbiya al-fawahisha ma dhahra minha wa ma batal Wal itma wal baghya bi ghayri al-haq Wa an tushriku billahi ma lam yunazzil bihi sultana Wa an taqulu ala allahi ma la ta'lamun Allah says in this verse Qul say to them Muhammad Inna ma harrama rabbiya al-fawahish Allah prohibited fawahish, which is zina. Ma'adahra, that which is apparent and that which is hidden. Wal ithma wal baghi. Sinning and transgression. Bighayr al haq without any rights. Wa an tushriku billahi, and to associate partners with Allah. And also what? Wa an taqulu ala Allahi ma la ta'lamun. And to say about Allah that which he hasn't. That which you have no knowledge of. To say about Allah that which you don't have no knowledge of. Wallahi, my beloved brothers and sisters, فَانْظُرُوا إِلَى هَذَا الْوَعْدِ الشَّدِيدِ Look at the severity of this particular threat and this warning. By somebody simply coming and saying, هَذَا حَلَالُ وَهَذَا حَرَامُ This is a halal, this is a haram. فِي قَوْلَان Yeah, they said there was a man. Everything he was asked, he was jahil, he didn't know anything. 
every time he was asked in a matter that he would say fihi qawlan fihi qawlan fihi qawlan there's two opinions there's two opinions he just heard the fuqaha say that so he regurgitates that so, nowadays there are people who just hold on to a couple of words they have and all the time when they get opportunity they keep saying nothing yeah? they keep using those same words they keep saying the same thing so this man is just like that Habaju ra'a atba'u kulli na'iq lam yastadhi'u bi nur al-'ilm It's a person who just follows the people he hasn't really got the light of knowledge and he's not holding on to a solid root so everything will say fi qawlan fi qawlan fi qawlan until one day somebody said to him afi llahi shakun fi qawlan is there doubt in Allah he said fi qawlan fi because he doesn't even, even understand what you're asking him. I feel like he said, He said, Fihi qawlan. Fihi. So his name was called Fihi. Fihi qawlan. His name was what? Fihi qawlan. So what I say is, brothers, stay away from that. Don't be a person who has um, a belief and you have a preconceived notion. And guess what? That is the usul that you pick up from. Anyone who's in accordance to your your i'tiqad and your belief. Now, <coughs> three, khudul ilma min ahlihi. Take knowledge from its people. Take knowledge from its people. Wallahi, a person's religion will not be steadfast until unless they take it take their until unless they take their knowledge from its people. Ulama is sunnah. Scholars of the Sunnah, because the scholars of the Sunnah are the ones who are holding on to the Kitab. They are the ones who are holding on to the Sunnah, and they are the ones who are basing it on the understanding of Salaf al Salih. When it comes to matters of Aqidah, when it comes to matters of politics, when it comes to matters of Da'wah, whether when it comes to matters of Manhaj, they are always going to make you sure that what you're given is pure. It's from the Manba al Safi, it is taken from the pure source. And they are the ones who are going to deal with matters accordingly. That's why the scholars, they used to say, the Prophet ﷺ said, Al-Barakatu ma'a kabirikum. The blessing is with your elders. The scholars, the Sheikh Muhammad Nasr al-Din al-Albani, like Sheikh Muhammad ibn Salih al-Uthaymin, like Abd Aziz ibn Abdullah ibn Baz, like today we have a life, Sheikh Abdul Muhsin al-Abbad, Sheikh Salih al-Fawzan, the Mufti Abdul Aziz Al Shaykh and Wahalum Majarra and it goes on. Haulai Akabiruna, these are our elders. These people, Baraka is with them. Al Baraka to Inda Akabirikum. The Baraka is with the elders. Ibn Hibban narrated it, Abu Nuaim and Hakim and Bayhaqi bin Hadith ibn Abbas, Radiallahu Ta'ala and Huma. Also Abdullah ibn Mas'ud. He used to say, لا ين- لا يزال الناس بخير. The people are upon khair. As long as what? ما أخذوا عن الأك- عن أكابرهم. As long as they take their knowledge from the akabir, the elders. فإذا أخذوا العلم على صاغرهم. If they take their knowledge from the y- youngsters. ها وشرارهم. And the evil ones. هلكوا. They become destroyed. Some of the Salaf, they used to say, وَهَذَا قَوْلِ بِنْ عَبْدُ اللَّهِ بِنْ مُبَارَكِ Abdullah ibn Mubarak used to say, that whenever you find the word أَصَاغِر أَمَا أَصَاغِر means, he used to say, it is أَهْلُ الْبِدَعَ He used to say the أَصَاغِر is the people of innovation. It's the people of innovation. So the person has to know who he takes his knowledge from. إن هذا العلم دين فانظر عما تأخذون دينكم. This is your religion, والله. والله your success of this world and the hereafter is connected to this. It is. So look at who you take it from. Muhammad ibn Sirin said this, and Imam Muslim brought it in his مقدمة. عبد الله بن عمر used to say, دينك دينك. Your religion, your religion. دمك دمك ولحمك. It is your blood and it is your flesh. فَخُذْ عَنِ الَّذِينَ اسْتَقَامُوا Take from those who are steadfast. وَلَا تَأْخُذُ عَنِ الَّذِينَ مَالُوا Don't take from those who deviated. Those who have curved from the straight path. Don't take from them. 
and Imam Malik used to say, "Awa kullama jaa'ana rajulun," and every time a man comes to us, "Ajdalu min rajulin," more argumentative than a man. Tarakna, we leave off. Ma alimna min sunnati Rasulihi sallallahu alaihi wasallam ni qauli. We leave off. We leave off the sunnah that we've known of the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Do we leave it for his speech? Because he's very eloquent in his argument. And that is how it is. Some of the ulama they used to say, "Inni la asma'u al faida." I hear a benefit from a people min al qawmi. I hear a benefit from a people. فلا أقبلها. I don't accept it. إلا بشاهدين عدلين unless two witnesses are brought forward. Who are these two witnesses? كتاب الله والسنة ورسوله صلى الله عليه وسلم. The Kitab and the Sunnah. Unless those two are in witness of that statement you just said, I won't write that faida. I won't write that faida. And Imam Malik used, Imam Ahmad used to say, "La tuqallidouni, don't blindly follow me. Wala tuqallidun, wala tuqallidu awzaiya, and do not blind follow awzai. Wala thawri, a Sufyan thawri. Wa khud, take from, min haythu akhadu where they took from." Take from where they took from. Al Imam al Shafi'i, he said, Ajma' al Muslimuna, ala anna man istabalat lahu sunnatun al Rasulillah, lam yada' la la yajuzu aman la. Abdullah ibn uh, Imam al Shafi'i, he said, Ajma' al Muslimuna, the scholars are unanimously in agreement, man istabalat lahu sunnatun al Rasulillah. Anyone who the Sunnah of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam becomes clear to them, لم يكن له أن يدعها لقول أحد It is not permissible for you to leave it for the statement of anybody, whatsoever and whoever it is. You're not allowed to leave it. The haqq has become true, clear to you. Ibn Abd al-Barr rahimahullah he said, Ibn Abd al-Barr rahimahullah he said, أجبع الناس the people are unanimously agree in agreement. على أن المقلد that the blind follower ليس معدودا he is not considered من أهل العلم from the people of knowledge. وأن العلم معرفة الحق بدليله and that knowledge is knowing the evidence. I mean knowing the truth with his evidence. ابن عبد البر رحمه الله said أجمع الناس على أن المقلد ليس معدودا من أهل العلم that the مقلد is not considered from the people of knowledge. When the ilma and that knowledge is, ma'rifatul haq is to know the truth, bi dalilihi with his evidence. It is to know the truth with his evidence. Our Messenger alayhi salatu wa salam said to us, innahu man ya'ish minkum, anyone from amongst you who lives, fasayra akhtilafan kathira. He's going to see a lot of disputes. The people are going to argue, and the people are going to hold different opinions. فعليكم بسنتي upon you is my sunnah وسنة الخلفاء الراشدين المهديين and upon you is the sunnah of the rightly guided خلفاء عضوا عليها بالنواجد hold on to it with your molar teeth وياكم and stay away from محدثات الأمور the newly introduced matters for verily every newly introduced matter is in the hellfire so the person has to realize that we're only living in what the Prophet has already told us, alayhi salatu wasalam, zamanul ikhtilafi wal fitna, at times of trials and tribulation. It's more of a reason today for us to hold on to those and methodology hard and grind harder onto it. Alaykum bi sunnati wa sunnati al khulafa al rashidin al mahdiyin. The Messenger did not tell us, alayhi salatu wasalam, to leave of our religion and to stay away from the nawa, from the Thawabit, the things that are solid in our religion, and our whole, and that which is التحاكم إلى كتاب الله, making the Quran and the Sunnah our source of judgment. For us to leave that to bring victory, how much has Shaitan duped us? How much has Shaitan fooled us? This is the reality, Wallah. Our Messenger Ali Sallallahu did not guide his the Muslims in any way, form, or shape to make groups to make groups and then to go into a, a parliament 
alayhi salatu wasalam. He didn't. My last and final advice is that seeking beneficial knowledge, the greatest illness that a people suffer from, my beloved brothers and sisters, is al jahlu ignorance. Ignorance is the worst illness. It is a, it's worse than cancer, wallahi. Wallahi, it's worse than cancer. It's worse than any illness that a person can say. Jahal. A person has to educate himself. Learn. Learn your religion. Learn your religion. And understand it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, وَالَّذِي بَعْتَ فِي الْأُمِّيِّينَ رَسُولًا مِنْهُمْ يَتُلُوا عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتِهِ وَيُزَكِّيهِمْ وَيُعَلِّمُهُمُ الْكِتَابُ وَالْحِكْمَةِ وَإِنْ كَانُوا مِنْ قَبْلُ وَإِنْ كَانُوا مِنْ قَبْلُ وَإِنْ كَانُوا مِنْ قَبْلُ لَفِي الضَّلَالِ مُبِينَ We were upon clear-cut misguidance before. And then Allah brought Nabi Allah Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam and he done two things for us. يُعَلِّمُهُمُ الْكِتَابُ وَيُزَكِّيهِمْ He was teaching them, educating them and he was purifying them. These people today who are telling to vote or telling these people to go into political arena, look at them. They left the masajid, they don't teach anymore. They don't educate the people anymore. Allah says, لَقَدْ مَنَّ اللَّهُ عَلَى الْمُؤْمِنِينَ إِذْ بَعَتَ فِيهِمْ رَسُولًا مِنْهُمْ يَتْلُوا عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتِهِ وَيُزَكِّيهِمْ وَيُعَلِّمُهُمُ الْكِتَابُ وَالْحَكْمَةِ وَإِنْ كَانُوا مِنْ قَبْلُ لَفِي ضَلَالٍ مُبِينَ A second ayah. لَقَدْ مَنَّ اللَّهُ عَلَى الْمُؤْمِنِينَ Allah has bestowed his favor upon the believers. How has Allah bestowed his favor? He sent for us a messenger. إِذْ بَعَتَ فِيهِمْ رَسُولًا مِنْهُمْ يَتْلُوا عَلَيْهِمْ آيَاتِهِ وَيُزَكِّيهِمْ وَيُعَلِّمُهُمُ الْكِتَابَ وَالْحِكْمَةِ وَإِنْ كَانُوا مِنْ قَبْلُ لَفِي ضَلَالٍ مُبِينٍ The favor is that he was educating us and he was teaching us عليه الصلاة والسلام We were upon what? We were upon clear-cut misguidance before that. And that is the dua Nabi Allah Ibrahim made رَبَّنَا وَبَعَثْ فِيهِمْ رَسُولًا مِنْهُمْ Oh Allah, Ibrahim said send from amongst them a prophet. What does he want his prophets to do? To do the two things. Educate them and to purify them. If you ever see a nation going to destruction is wallahi when they stop learning their religion and when they become ignorant of their religion. And that's why I also wanted to say Ya ikhwati al-kiram my beloved brothers and sisters al-adl wal-insaf we need to be fair in the way we deal with those people who we even oppose. Justice and fairness is needed. Allah says, وَلَا يَجْرِمَنَّكُمْ شَنَآنُ قَوْمٍ عَلَىٰ أَلَّا تَعْدِلُوا اِعْدِلُوا هُوَ أَقْرَبُ لِلتَّقْوَىٰ Don't let an enmity and an hate that you have for a people stop you from being just towards them. Allah says, be just, for verily justness, and justice is taqwa. Also Allah says, يَا أَيُّ الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا كُونُوا قَوَّامِينَ بِالْقِسْتِ شُهَدَاءَ لِلَّهِ وَلَوْ عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِكُمْ أَوْ الْوَالِدَيْنِ وَالْأَقْرَبِينَ إِنْ يَكُنْ غَنِيًّا أَوْ فَقِيرًا فَاللَّهُ أَوْلَى بِهِمَا فَلَا تَتَّبِعُوا الْهَوَىٰ أَنْ تَعْدِلُوا وَإِنْ تَلُوا أَوْ تُعْرِضُوا فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ كَانَ بِمَا تَعْمَلُونَ خَبِيرًا Be just. Even if you have to be just against yourself. وَلَوْ عَلَىٰ أَنفُسِكُمْ Even your own family members. Even the closest to you and the people who are closest to you. This is the characteristics you have to hold. Whilst I was speaking, وَهَذِهِ مِنْ عَادَةِ الْبَشَرَ is from the nature and the natural disposition of the human that a mistake will happen. A shortcoming will occur. جَلَّ مَنْ لَعَيْبَ لَهُ Honorable is the one who doesn't do mistakes, which is Allah. If what everything I said and every shortcoming that came out of my mouth, or if I didn't do no mistake, and everything I said that was correct, then what significance would the Qur'an hold? What significance would the Qur'an hold? It wouldn't. So what I'm saying is, if I did a mistake, a shortcoming, is for me a shaitan and Allah and his messenger are free from it. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik. Ashadu an la ilaha illallah. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayh.